Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner combined with a Chassis Sim tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you about a very important topic. Creating a car model getting started, and particularly why I'm excited about this tutorial today, ladies and gentlemen, is that this came as a result of one of our recent boot camps. And one of the attendees asked a great question. He said, it's really great that you've shown us the mechanics of how to use Chassis Sim, but let's just say that I'm starting completely from scratch. I've got a car model here that I've never touched. I don't know what the car is. How do I connect the dots? And that was a brilliant question, and this is what we're going to be addressing in this tutorial. Now, as the questionnaire in that boot camp alluded to, if you are starting from a car that you've never touched before, you don't know what it is, creating a car model for this can be extremely daunting. And indeed, the most daunting part that trips up a lot of novice to intermediate users is how you connect the dots. And what we're going to be talking about today in this tutorial is how the process of connecting those dots and bringing this all together. So let's get started. First things first, step one, measure up the car. Now, this is something that I have discussed at length in my tutorial, How to Measure Up a Race Car. I also talk about this at length in the Chassis Sim Boot Camps. That being said, a quick elevator speech of the sort of stuff that you're after. You're after all the car links, so your wheelbases, your tracks, you want all your suspension geometry points, you want to measure up your motion ratios, you want to measure up any bump steer if that's appropriate, and you also want to make a record of your springs, your bar rates, um, and um, your um, uh, peak force versus um, damping ver uh, versus your, your peak force versus your peak um, damping velocity curve. So that's a quick elevator speech of the sort of stuff that you're looking for. But one thing that I want to say here to any junior engineers or Formula student teams who are tuning into this, it's all well and good if you've got these points in CAD. Nothing replaces measuring up the car because I have lost count of the number of times where I've had people say, okay, we've got these motion ratios, we've done it in CAD. And when you actually measure it up on the car and you look at the simulated data, it's a whole different ballgame. So that's step one. Step two, make sure the data is working in your byline here. A good monster file is your best friend. Now, I discussed at length in both the boot camps and in the tutorial, making your chassis a monster file, had the process of going together and putting a monster file together. But I really want to ram home this point that one of Chassis Sim's strengths is, a, is its ability to be able to fill in the blanks from race data. And in particular, to being able to fill in the blanks of things like your tire model and your aero model. That being said, you are only as good as the quality of the data. And make sure you double you check, double check, triple check this, because once you get the data working, everything else will flow downstream from this. Step three, pick a template as close as possible to your car. Now, the great thing is that Chassis Sim has a number of well-defined templates that you can choose um, from. And make sure you modify them to suit. You do not get any brownie points for starting completely from scratch and showing how intellectually brilliant you are. Start from a well-known template and modify it to suit. And here's a quick um, guide in terms of what templates you should be choosing. So if you're running, say, an F3 or an equivalent, a really good start point is the, is the um, Dallara F310 template. Um, F2 sports car or equivalent, you're looking at the GP2 2011 template. Indeed, that GP2 2011 template is pretty much the base of all the Formula 2 LMP, uh, LMP1, LMP2 models that we've got running around out there. They can sort of trace their lineage back to that template. Front wheel drive, the WRX MY98 template is a really good place to start. GT3 and GT2 is the LP560 GT3 template. Make no mistake, I actually think that of all the Chassis templates, for me, the LP560 GT3 template is actually one of the best there uh, is one of the best there is because pretty much all of the GT3 models that we've got out there can sort of trace their lineage right back to that template. And if you're dealing with a stock car or a muscle car, the V8 supercar template is actually a really good start. So again, that gives you a pretty good menu of stuff that you can choose from. Step four, hand calculate the error. Now, one could argue that I've done this matter to death, but the reason that you need to hand calculate the error 
what you're after is that you want to do a hand calc of the um, car at the end of the longest straight. And the reason you want to do that hand calculation is that number one, it's good practice, but also two, you want to create a unity error map from it because because after you've gone through the trouble of measuring up the car, making sure what the spring rates are, making sure the data is well calibrated, that gives you your first cut of the aero. And by using a Unity Aero Map, it's going to make your first your uh, your first uh, iteration at correlation a, a hell of a lot easier. Okay, step five: do a smooth simulation model to validate the sim. Now, what you want to be doing here is just simply create a curvature file. The whole point of this is to make sure there aren't any nasty surprises in the model. So you want to make sure that the front and the rear dampers are, cor uh, are correlating relatively closely. You're not looking for correlation to within plus or minus 0.01 of a millimeter. You're looking here for about maybe plus or minus a, uh, plus or minus a mil. Also too, might I just say that you're not looking for cornering speeds that are going to be uh, within 0.1 or 2 of a kilometer an hour. If you're within three to four or five k, that's good enough for this purpose. Because what you're double checking is that you want to make sure that the rolls are okay, the pitch is okay. But more importantly, you're looking for situations like this. So what we've got is a very, very simple sports car uh, model um, uh, that we did. So as you can see, with this very, very simple curvature only model, okay, the front dampers weren't too bad. But take a look at what happened with the rear damper uh, with the rear dampers in that lower plot. We've got the actual dampers like this, but the simulated dampers were uh, were a lot lower. What happened here is in this particular car, the stated um, rear third spring motion ratio was inverted. So the great thing about doing that smooth simulation is the fact that all of a sudden you can see really quickly if you've made a very, very big mistake somewhere. The other thing too, where this really comes to the fore, is this is a great opportunity while you still got your Unity Aero map to dial in your peak CDA and to fine tune your powertrain um, uh, characteristics. So that's step five. Step six, aero mapping. If you've got a CLA north of one and a half, and if your car mass is say less than about a thousand kilos, then See, uh, then doing um, your error mapping is your next step. And as always, validate from race data. Now, I've talked about this in a number of error modeling tutorials on the Chassis uh, YouTube page. I also go to this in great length in the boot camps. But I want to make the point, always validate from race data. Do not skip this point. Step seven, construct and tune the circuit model. So the goal is that you want to construct your bump profile, your altitude and road camber scaling factor. And again, I talk about this in the Chassis Sim 101 tutorial. I also talk about this at length in the bootcamps where we discuss um, the Formula 3 example. But really why we want to do this at this stage of the game is we want to get a good baseline for the tyre loads for the tyre modelling. And that dovetails into step eight, which is your tyre modelling. And in particular, tyre modelling from scratch where we use the second, uh, where we use the traction circle radius se uh, second order approximation to get us in um, uh, to um, to, uh, to get us into um, the ballpark. Now again, I've talked about this in tire modeling from nothing on the Chassis of YouTube page. I also go into this at great length in the boot camps where I discuss uh, where I give you a hands-on example of how you actually do this to fine uh, uh, to fine tune this. Because once you've got this, you can then go off and use the Chassis Tire Force modeling to refine that result. Step, uh, the last point is refining the model using the track replay. The track replay is a great tool for validation indeed. I actually had one of the, for my um, uh, Formula 2 um, customers slash GP3, well now Euro F3 customers, who actually, when it came to correlation, didn't actually bother using the lap time simulation. They purely used the track replay simulation. And the great thing about this is that you can chip away at the model with things that aren't right, where say we need to tune, where we need to tweak the error map a little bit, um, etc. where we need to um, tweak the error map a little bit. It also will give you a very good highlight if there's anything a little bit amiss in terms of um, things like um, structural flexion issues that you've got to take into account, and also to things like if you've been a little bit off in terms of things like your bar rate um, uh, calculations and stuff like that. But again, this is probably your last step in uh, the process. The other thing too, and I just want to 
sort of really just go back to time modeling for just a moment. Again, remember the point of this video is to show you how to get going from a blank sheet of paper to um, something that's usable. That being said, one of the things I just want to stress about tire modeling, again, this will take about three or four iterations from different circuits to get this right. But again, I talk about that at length at the boot camps, but I just wanted to acknowledge that point. So wrapping this up, constructing a car model from scratch is not as intimidating as you think. It's simply a matter of connecting the appropriate dots and following the steps we have just discussed. And if you do that, ladies and gentlemen, the correlation like you see uh, like you see here, we've actual as colored, simulated as black, where we've got speed, throttle, front dampers, rear dampers, steered angle at the tire, lateral G, longitudinal G, front and rear roll, that comes as a consequence. But don't take my word for it. If you're an existing member of the chassis community, by all means, give this a, uh, give this a crack. But if you're not an existing member of the chassis community, Sign up to our online simulation and find out for yourself just what a powerful tool this is. And we'll catch you in the next Chess Sim tutorial slash next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.